Today on Ham Radio Q&A, a recorded presentation on using DMR or digital mobile radio, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9GBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, you know, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, recently, I attended the 21st Annual Wisconsin Aries Races Conference. Now, this annual conference is for you know, emergency communicators interested in furthering their skills and networking with like, other like-minded people. Now, this event's pretty well attended, you know, pulling in um, over 100 amateur radio operators from around the state. I think the strong attendance along with the caliber of its presenters really makes for uh, the must-go-to event in any, and for anyone interested in emergency communications. Plus, you know, this event always has the best door prizes, and I got this really fancy coffee mug, uh, perfect size for drinking bourbon out of. I recorded a couple of the breakout sessions, and in this video I have a presentation titled Using DMR or Digital Mobile Radio. This is by Chris DeWayne, AB9RP. Uh, thank you, Chris, for taking the time to uh, put together this presentation for the conference. So I'm not really going to talk anymore, but instead turn it over to him. Welcome, I'm Chris, AB9RP, uh, here to give you a really quick tour of DMR in 10 minutes or less. 10 minutes or less. <laughs> um, so my, my, really my audience is for the person who's heard of DMR, but they don't know anything about it. Uh, it's, it's about all I can cover in 10 minutes. There's a lot of support out on the internet and YouTube. Um, that can help you get going. So what is DMR? DMR is a digital voice mode like we just heard from John Crook. The real draw of DMR is that it makes worldwide communications possible and somewhat easy. Um, it is dependent on the internet for a backbone and there are really two main ways to access DMR for worldwide communications. One was through a local repeater and the other is through a hotspot. I won't be able to talk too much about a repeater because I don't really have local access to a repeater, so I've, all of my experience has been through the hot spot. Uh, arguably, I would say that DMR is currently the most popular digital voice mode in amateur radio. I pulled these uh, statistics yesterday. Um, the, the stats on this uh, website that's linked here are really our lives, so they fluctuate up and down moment by moment as systems come online and uh, disconnect. So 3,700 plus repeaters, 10,000 plus hotspots. And that's a lot of people out there. Not all of them are active at any one time, but there's a lot of traffic. So 143,000 plus radio, unique radio IDs in the database as of yesterday. Now, for the most part, one person, one radio ID, but you can request more than one. The only time you really need more than one is if you own multiple radios and they're going to be used simultaneously. So if you wanted a uh, unique that, you know, it would, I, I'm not really sure what would happen if the both radios came up on the network at the same time with the same ID. I believe it would work, but I've never tested it. Uh, QSO rate, this was really a little bit eye-opening. The QSOs per hour was peaking between 8 and 10,000 QSOs per hour worldwide over the last about two months. Wow. So there's a lot of traffic out there. Really, and uh, since I've just uh, round number five, I don't remember what I've said and what I didn't say, but if you're the kind of ham who likes to just rag to and talk to people worldwide, this is the mode for you. Anytime, day and night, there's going to be somebody out there ready to have a QSO. And if you, if, you, uh, if you like to talk to other parts of the world and you're disappointed with our lack of sunspots, DMR is the place for you. You can chat with people worldwide, um, really great voice clarity. You don't have to worry about lack of sunspots. You don't have to worry about noise or fading. It's, it works really well. So the technology, the technology behind DMR um, comes from a European commercial standard. And the, the two points I want to hit here is that because it's a commercial standard, this really accounts for kind of some of the somewhat frankly strange terminology that's used in DMR, and we'll hit that in the next slide. But the thing that's different about DMR I also want to point out is time slots. 
The technology behind DMR is TDMA, which is Time Division Multiple Access. On one 12 and a half kilohertz channel, you can have two simultaneous voice QSOs at the same time, no bleeding, no crossover, no interference. And it does this by alternating, it tick tocks back and forth between time slot one and time slot two, and they just keep alternating. What's happening in the radio is that as I talk to the radio, my voice is getting digitalized, digitized through the analog to digital converter, and then that data is getting sent out over the frequency, uh, alternating between time slot one and time slot two. That time slot really becomes important when you're using a repeater, not as much when you're using a hotspot. So to help you map, if you've never heard of DMR, it really helps you to learn if you can map the new terminology to something you're already familiar with. So radio ID, where you talked about, that's my identifier that I programmed into my radio. And as I, because when I make a transmission, uh, this particular radio has enough memory that it can load the entire DMR ID database into the radio. So let's say Ken keys up. I can see it's going to transmit his identifier. And then on the screen, I'll see his name, call sign, and location. I've noticed that uh, the, I think it's the European privacy standards, if you're coming out of Great Britain, typically you just see the call sign and first name only. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So programming software. Uh, we might use RT system programming software. It might be something provided by the vendor. On the DMR side, it's called the CPS, or the customer programming software. And on the amateur side, I just saved my file. I put in all my frequencies, I put in all the data, and I saved it. On the DMR side, this is the code plug. And if you're, you're not gonna be around DMR very long before you hear code plug. Code plug really is the entire configuration of the radio. <coughs> and it's everything from the memory channels, the uh, scanning zones, it, it's everything down to, can I even push this button? And what happens when I do? You know, what's the screen brightness? Everything about the radio is configurable. All of that goes into the code plug. And the, the source of that term really comes from back in the day on the land mobile radios. You'd have the radio tech would sit down at his computer. He would come up with a configuration for the radio. And that would, he would write that configuration to a little memory device. And that memory device would get plugged into the radio, hence code plug. On the amateur side, we have memory slots. On the DMR side, that would be called a channel. Those channels are banked up. We would have a memory bank. On the DMR side, you have a zone. In my radio, I have zones for, uh, uh, I have like geographic. I have one zone for geographic areas. So worldwide, North America, USA, Wisconsin. Um, I have another, chan or another zone for the special interest channels. You might have an uh, AMSAT talk group or you know, some, other, um, some other specialty group. One of the podcasts I listen to, they have a, a talk group just for people in their, where their club is and then for the, uh, for the podcast. Well, the other one, uh, PLL, PL tone, CTCSS tone, DMR, it's called a color code. And this is one of the silliest at all because there's no colors. It's just a number from 1 to 16. Why it's called a color code, I don't know. Uh, talk groups and time slots we've already talked about. Uh, the talk group is really just a numeric identifier. If I have a radio ID that represents me, that's a numeric identifier. There's also a numeric identifier that identifies the talk group that I want to talk on. So anytime I key up my radio, I'm putting out everybody who's tuned to that talk group, 91 worldwide. Every time I key up, that audio is going to go out and come back. We're all going to be able to hear and talk to each other, everybody who's, uh, who's tuned to that talk group. Just a few tips I want to point out. Um, you're, going to hear the, you're going to hear a lot of key ups, especially if you're on one of the, the popular uh, talk groups like worldwide. You're going to hear key ups, lots of key ups. And on the local repeater, kerchunking the repeater may be considered bad form, but on DMR, it's an absolute necessity. Because the way it works is whether I'm talking to my local hotspot or I'm talking to the, or I'm connected to a repeater, in order to connect my hotspot or connect the repeater to a specific talk group, I have to key up. When I have my radio tuned to a specific talk group, I key up, transmits to the receiver, or to the, either the hotspot or the uh, repeater, 
And if it's not already transmitting that particular audio, now I'm connected to that talk group. So you're gonna hear lots of it. And it may not be because they don't wanna talk, it's just they wanna monitor that talk group. And it's really a good idea even, it's a good idea to key up on the talk group, let it connect, and listen for a few minutes. I've heard many, many times, you're listening, you're in a QSO, or you're monitoring a QSO, all of a sudden somebody keys up and just starts talking. They just, they keyed up, they weren't even listening to see if there was a QSO going on already. So it's just good form to key up, monitor for a little bit, and then start talking. Which leads into timing. This is a linked repeater system, so take your time. Key up, just, uh, just pause, half a beat before you start talking. When you're done talking, leave half a beat before you unkey. Between your transmissions, leave little gaps. Because some of the older radios, uh, most of the newer radios deal with it just fine. If you come in halfway through a transmission, it can start decoding it. But some radios, if the radio doesn't hear the first couple packets of a transmission, it won't be able to start giving you audio until the next over. So they may talk for two minutes, but you miss the first little bit. It's not going to decode the audio until the next over. So just take your time. And one of the other things you want to do, because of the need to key up to switch talk groups, leave gaps. I've been numerous times, I'm listening to a talk group and you got a couple of guys and they're just back and forth right on top of each other. And let's say I'm bored, I don't want to, you know, I'm not interested in what they're talking about, I want to switch to another talk group. If I can't get a transmission into my hotspot to key it up, I can't escape. <laughs> I can't escape because I can't get a transmission in. Um, then one other one, a special talk group, you want to take it to kind of say this a lot of times, you'll hear this, somebody will come up on the frequency and just wants to do a radio check. There's advantages to that because they can give me feedback on the audio. But you can also hit the parrot talk group. The parrot talk group, if I key up and I say something and wait, it'll repeat it back to me, kind of like an old simplex repeater. It'll record a few seconds of whatever I say. When I unkey, I wait, it'll play it back to me. This is a great way to hear what your audio sounds like coming back from the network because what I notice this happens a lot. There's a lot of radios out there. They come out of the box with the microphone gain set way too high. And one of the things that happens if you have a, your uh, hot mic is it goes through that analog to digital converter and it just gets really garbled, hard to understand. The audio quality is just really poor. And it's not because DMR is, uh, you know, it's not because of the network. It's because the microphone gain is just set way too hot and it leads to really, really poor audio quality. So you can, you can do it with another person on the air or you can use the Parrot Talk group to hear what you sound like. <coughs> just want to throw out a few recommendations really quick. Uh, DMR is really inexpensive to try. Unlike most things in amateur radio, this really is not very expensive. You can get a DMR radio for under $100. You can get a, a Zoom Spot is about $120. Uh, the open spots are a little more expensive, but the open spot is great if you want to take your uh, radio on the road. Your, uh, let's say you commute a lot. The open spot is just like a little puck, a little rechargeable puck. No user interface other than a power button. But if you're in the car, it, it really uh, works really well. You would have to pair it up with your cell phone uh, to get mobile data. But once you have that, you're on the go. Uh, the the MD380, the TYT380 is kind of the granddaddy and probably one of the main drivers of growth in DMR because it was available for under $100. Um, the Anytone 868 and 878 are a little more full featured, dual band radios, uh, highly recommended. There's a lot of user support for this, so there's a lot of people um, who are using these radios, who can answer questions. There's blog posts, there's YouTube videos that cover this stuff really in depth. Um, I, happen, I have the Elenco, the DJ md 5 t a great radio. And it looks, the programming software, the user interface looks almost identical to the Anytone. And from what I understand, that's because the, it's badged Elenco, but it's manufactured by Anytone. Um, but just a fantastic radio. The nice thing about the Inlinko is it's sold through a US distributor with support, you know, so if something goes wrong, 
you've got um, you've got something local. And I just wanted to point out a few links. Getting started with DMR, it's not the easiest thing. It is a little bit of work. There's different terminology. The programming of the radio, the programming software, is admittedly complicated. But it's not it's not too complicated. It's challenging, but not impossible. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity out there. So if you like to chat and just have uh, the reg chew with other people, really is the mode for you. Um, and there's lots and lots of support on the internet. Um, that's really all I have. Thanks for coming. Everybody have questions? I think this is probably the last one. It's three o'clock, so I think the next session is starting any minute now. If you have questions, you can grab me in the hallway. Thank you. Later. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Well, if you have any questions or comments about them, always leave um, leave it down in the comments below. I do filter through those and answer them to the best I can. But for more articles and information, please uh, check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you enjoyed this video, you can always do a few things for me. You know, the first thing is, give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And since you've watched this far, you might as well hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe and the little bell uh, icon will notify you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.